Well, y'all, that was Backlash. Um, everything, well, honestly, a lot that we didn't really expect. There were a few matches that were actually cut before it even started. And the biggest match of them all that everybody was looking forward to was Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. That was cut short because of his head injury. But for some strange reason, when it, it when the match actually happened, they had Randy Orton come out. And just to screw Bray Wyatt, and then he just rolled out and left. And his opponent, instead of it being Randy, o him being Randy Orton, was Kane. Yeah. Other than that, I will say this: they made they made good with the best that they made the best of what they had. I I'm just gonna say that they didn't. I'm not gonna necessarily say that every match was a throwaway. The only match that pretty much was was Baron Corbin versus uh, Apollo Crews. That match was definitely a throwaway. And it was very predictable. We knew that Apollo Crews would not go over this time. But that was for a kickoff match. So, and we didn't even know there was one because it wasn't even posted. They just had to spring it up at the last minute because of the fact that the match with Randy Orton had to be somewhat postponed. But the thing of it is, is that I guess I can understand why they did it because they kind of want to prolong the feud. But in my humble opinion, they needed to just have Bray Wyatt just have the win. Because there's no way that they're going to have another match for Randy Orton because he has issues after that head injury that Brock Lesnar gave him a SummerSlam. So I am not necessarily seeing that Bray Wyatt is going to get his comeuppance um, against Randy. I just don't see it happening. And I wish they kind of killed it tonight. But, and plus, the fact is, is that it didn't really make any sense for it to be a 10 count, only for it to be extended into having Kane come down and then having him come out later. It would have made more sense for there just to be no match at all between those two. And if they actually decide to have a match down the line when he's feeling better, then do that. Because it's a given that earlier today, they said that he wasn't really cleared to wrestle. If that was the case, then why did he come out and do that if he wasn't cleared to wrestle? I don't know. It just didn't really make any sense at all. It was complete. It was a bunch of confusion, and I wasn't a big fan of that match. And it's a shame. It would have been better. It could have been better, but it just wasn't better. But I gotta say that the person that impressed me the most tonight definitely was the Miz. The Miz always was the type of guy to play the safe because, of course, he had the big money maker, and he was always the guy that was in movies and he had to look good all the time. But tonight, he actually fought for that championship. It made me feel like that championship actually was worth something to him. And he literally gave it his all against Dolph Ziggler. Even though I knew that Dolph wasn't going to win, I was really impressed on how The Miz actually was fighting like a fighting champion. It really did make me think a little differently of The Miz. And I am happy that he is champion, but now I have a little bit more respect for him now. So I think it was a really good call and a really great match. I have to say, it definitely was kind of a stunner of the night. Not so much the match of the night, but it was a stunner of the night. Because I really never expected The Miz to pull off not only great moves, but also put a lot of heart and a lot of fight um, behind his match. I never expected that. But it was, a really, it, it was a really good match. I got no beef with that at all. And let's talk about the women's six-pack challenge. I never thought that that match was going to start off first, but then I never really thought of how completely sloppy it was. It was pretty sloppy. But I have to say that the only person that made that match interesting and worthwhile was Naomi. And since she was the second person eliminated, I kind of stopped caring. I don't mind the fact that Becky Lynch won. In fact, I was excited. I'm very happy that she won. I think she should have gotten a... I mean, the fact that you actually did it on the first SmackDown pay-per-view, I get it. It was the first. And the fact that she's the first SmackDown Women's Champion, I think is amazing. So I don't mind her winning at all. I'm just happy it wasn't Carmella. Because Carmella did not get not one ounce of reaction from the crowd. That's bad. She didn't get any reaction in her hometown. She still get reaction in Richmond, Virginia. She's not getting any reaction at all. She has to start thinking about what to do with her gimmick to get people to notice her. And at least make some kind of reaction, whether it's a boo or whether it's a cheer. Something. Even her being a heel, no one cares. And that's not good. That's bad. Hopefully this feud with Nikki Bella does something for her. Because it's 
so far, this gimmick that she has only worked when she was with Enzo and Cass. But now that she's not, she needs to be on her own and have her own new shtick. But she can't do the same one that she did on NXT. It's just not working. Heal or no, it's just not working. I was really shocked that, that um, Nikki Bella got eliminated. I was, She was like the fourth, I think. She got eliminated the same exact time as Natalia, I believe. And I was really shocked. And yes, I was making tons of jokes about Alexa Bliss looking like a discount Harley Quinn because she kind of did. And the same thing with Nikki Bella looking like a discount uh, Wonder Woman. I was just like, what was with the DC gimmicks going on? Because it was a lot of them. But other than that, it wasn't bad. It, it really wasn't bad at all. It wasn't a bad match. They did what they could with it. But I tell you what, Becky Lynch was on fire. Like she was going right and left, just knocking people out. I was so happy when she won the belt. I was ecstatic, and it's nice the fact that this is actually the first SmackDown brand split pay-per-view that she actually won the title on. I think it actually has a lot more meaning to it, and even though I do believe that a heel would actually make that belt look better, they don't really have good enough heels in the women's division because they only have like seven people in the entire division, and unfortunately the best person is not there, and it makes me sad that Eve Marie wasn't there. Because she can bring so much heat to that belt. But since she wasn't there, you had to settle with what you got. And Natalia's not good enough as a heel. So they had to go to the babyface to save the night. Because honestly, if you had Carmella win, there would be a lot of pissed off people. A lot of them. I'm glad they made the call to have Becky win because she needed to save that match. Since Naomi was eliminated, they had to save it somehow. So it was a good call on them. Now let's talk about the tag team titles. I don't give two craps what anybody says. The Usos do not deserve to be there. Number one, because they got eliminated clean within, what, 15 seconds? And then number two, they took out their opponent. They literally injured their opponent. They injured the winners of the match to where they couldn't even perform. They literally had the guy, I think it was Gable, that had a bruised, uh, bruised MCL. They bruised his freaking MCL. That's a hard ligament to bruise. And I never really heard of a bruised ligament. But other than that, the fact that they actually bruised the back, the, the bruise is his MCL, and I think it's LCL, I believe. But the fact that they ended up injuring them right after the match was over, why are you awarding these people with a second chance? Because it just should have been the Hype Bros versus Heath Slater and Rhino in the finals. There should not have been a semifinals in this. It was already set. You had everybody already eliminated. You already had your two people. You did not need to have the Usos. I understand it had to bring a little bit more flavor to it because the fact you had the hype bros, you had two faces going against each other. Who freaking cares? It's nice to see the Usos actually be heel again, but the Usos should have came out during the match between the hype bros and his Slater to bring a little bit more surprise to it not actually have them in the match i would have been fine with that but in the very end it didn't really matter and i didn't really see the match in its entirety so i can't say if it's good or bad because i got so freaking bored with it and i fell asleep i just woke up and i just saw he slater and rhino with the titles on their arms and i'm like okay yeah they won and i knew that was coming but gosh man before i get into the other matches i'm gonna tell you i'm just gonna say this this pay-per-view dragged on. There are some matches that just should have just ended right where it stood. But I know they didn't really have a lot to go on. And they had to extend it out as much as they could. But that tag team tournament match just dragged the frick on. And I just wanted it just to be over. And I was just like already halfway asleep. And I'm just like, oh, I gotta go get some popcorn just to stay awake. But other than that. It was really hard to watch that match all the way through. But when I did wake up, he Slater ended up being the champion. They ended up talking about how they're going to buy a double Y, and I think that was great. I really think they did Heath Slater well. They built him up well to be the underdog. And I really wish I saw the champion, the look on their faces when they won a championship, but I just I was completely out. But other than that, it's nice that they actually did have a win, and I'm happy that they did. But let's move on to the match that actually does count. AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. That match was constantly going from start to finish. It did not stop. It kept on going. It was speeding up. It started high. I mean, literally, it was at a steady pace throughout the entire night. These guys had so much flow. It was ridiculous. 
then it started heating up a lot more towards the very end and then all of a sudden you get that payoff seeing AJ Styles win and the crowd going nuts I knew that AJ Styles was going to be the face that runs the place. As much as I love Dean Ambrose, I knew that his title reign was going to come to an end. He had a he had a healthy reign. It's not like he had it's not like a, a Sasha Banks where Sasha Banks only had like three weeks. He's had a lengthy, healthy title reign, and I'm I'm satisfied with that. I'm satisfied with Dean dropping the belt to AJ Styles because AJ Styles would make that belt look good. He would make that belt look good because he's becoming such a decent heel. To where the people are starting to take notice of him. If you take notice of him and him actually promoting himself as champion, people are going to look at that belt more. So I'm fine with AJ Styles winning. I think they had a lot of good calls here. A lot of great calls, except for that Randy Orton match. That is the only downer of the entire match. Bray Wyatt can't catch a break to save his life. No matter what they do, they always seem to screw him in the very end. He has not been able to win a Big Four pay-per-view as well as any other gimmick pay-per-views since his debut. I hate to say it, but that's true. The only pay-per-view that he actually won that was a big four was SummerSlam that just passed this year. That's it. And that's a shame. Because Bray Wyatt needs to be booked as a dominant monster, but I don't know whether or not they're looking at him, looking at him being a dominant monster for long term. I was so pissed off when I saw Kane come out. I'm like, and I think that there was somebody on, on um, Twitter that actually mentioned that they could have done this, they could have used this to debut Kurt Hawkins. And it would have made sense to debut Kurt Hawkins here against Bray Wyatt. It would have been amazing. But unfortunately, they just had Kane come out and then had a match with Kane. And I was hoping that Kane was going to lose. They made, they made, they tried to make good of what they had. Unfortunately, that match fell short when Randy decided to come out. I was hoping that Randy just stayed gone and he was done and then they just had a match with Kane and Kane was going to lose and have Bray Wyatt go over. Because Bray Wyatt needs to go over. There's only so many times that Bray Wyatt can lose. And yes, he has a persona to where it doesn't necessarily matter, but it can affect the overall appeal, the overall power in his words. Nobody is going to take him seriously if he keeps losing. He needs to have an epic win. It should have been tonight, but it was not. And they blew that. That's just my opinion. But overall, guys, my, my, my opinion of this pay-per-view is this. It's average. It's completely and utterly, mediocrely, if that's a word, <laughs> average. There is nothing extraordinarily special about this pay-per-view except for the belts that debuted. It's nice to see Becky Lynch win. She had an amazing win in a really great match uh, in, in, in the match that she was in. The highlight of the night, I definitely can't say, was the main event. While the stunner of the night definitely was The Miz. The Miz impressed me greatly. But this pay-per-view was average. There was nothing special about it. It Just because the fact it was the first, it didn't feel like the first. It didn't have that overall, this is the first SmackDown match ever, like SmackDown pay-per-view ever appeal. They said it many times, but it never felt that way. I, it did have some what of a feel when it came to the tag team belts and also for the for the women's title a little bit but not a lot so i still consider this to be an average pay-per-view but there were matches that i do consider to be hidden gems but other than that guys what are your thoughts about this pay-per-view what did you think about it what's something that you would change i want to know your thoughts about this leave a comment in the comment section below let me know exactly how you feel about this pay-per-view and what you would do to change it. And other than that, guys, I'm done here. I will see you tomorrow at Raw. Peace out.